Well, he is the most respected banker in the country, the bank in the country. He's been right on a lot of things. He's Jamie Dimon, losing his cool with the D.C. swamp on his bank's earnings conference call today. The high-powered, outspoken executive went on a roughly four-minute rip into Washington, D.C., saying it's an embarrassment being an American overseas when he has to explain the rampant red tape swamping this country. Nothing getting done. He's tired of the anemic GDP growth that happened under President Obama and is still with us. Jamie Dimon even says the American business sector is powerful and strong despite the D.C. gridlock. Now, J.P. Morgan Chase reporting earnings that handily beat Wall Street estimates. However, the bank lowered its forecast for lending revenue and shares fell about 1% lower to 92 bucks and change. It's still up nearly 50% year over year. Let's take this to former Republican presidential candidate. He's a former representative as well. He's Dr. Ron Paul. He joins me now. It's good to see you, Dr. You. Paul. Thank you. Good to be with you. Do you agree and understand uh, Jamie Dimon's outrage and frustration with the D.C. swamp? Yeah, I don't think I have too much trouble with that. I think uh, most Republicans and most conservatives, most people right now evidently feel somewhat like that, and I don't have any problems with it. I, I think sometimes what people look at when they look at Washington is they're looking at symptoms. You know, why don't we have medical care? Why don't we have this? Why don't we have that? Why don't they balance the budget? Why don't they pass a tax pa package? And I think it's because they're looking at symptoms rather than the real cause. And I, as, uh, as good a, ba a banker as Mr. Diamond is, I don't think he has any uh, concern about the principle of central banking creating this mess because he's been involved a long time. He's been on the board of directors of the New York Bank. So he's a participant in this, and, I, and all banks participate in it. They, are, they get to be the lender of last resort. In the meantime, they make a lot of yeah, money. Let's listen so, to what, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Let's listen to what else Jamie Dimon said about everyday Americans and what they want, to your point, Dr. Paul. Let's take a listen. Okay. Who wake up in the morning, they want to feed their kids, they want to buy a home, they want to do things. The same with American businesses. My, what I'm saying is that it would be much stronger growth had we made intelligent decisions and were they not gridlocked. We are unable to build bridges, we're unable to build airports, our inner city school kids are not graduating. I mean, China's building airports faster. And here's the thing, Dr. Paul, better get those Trump reforms done because Janet Yellen at the Fed is predicting five more years of sub-3% growth. It looks like, you know, President Obama won. The U.S. is growing like Europe. So should Congress skip the August recess just to fix and unwind the Obama government overreach? Yeah, but I'd still stick to my argument. You're dealing with the symptoms because the system is unworkable. It's sort of like saying, how can you fix, uh, uh, fix Venezuela by tinkering and then making sure one program at work? No, I, don't, I think the Keynesian model that we have worked with for, you know, 50, 75 years is coming to an end. Debt is overwhelming. There's so much malinvestment, and uh, you have to have liquidation of all the mistakes. But the people don't want that. They want to fix it. They want to give more more money, who's calling for free market medical care? Who's calling for a constitutional approach to education? No, that is not it. They won't admit that Keynesian economic policy is a failed uh, adventure and that the debt is overwhelming. But if you don't talk about debt, uh, you can't pay for building highways. You can't run the military industrial complex. We can't run the world. And, and then we go arguing back, who's the meanest person in the world for not providing such and such care? Oh, you won't even give birth control pills to people. You know, and it goes yeah. on and on. They saying. won't admit it. They won't admit Let's the country is bankrupt yeah. and the banks have participated in it. Let's Let's listen to what Jamie Dimon said about how the rest of the world agrees with him. Listen. I was just in France. I was recently in Argentina. I was in Israel. I was in Ireland. Uh, I, we met with the Prime Minister of India and China. It's amazing to me that every single one of those countries understands that practical policies that promote business and growth is good for the average citizens of those countries, for jobs and wages, and that somehow this great American free enterprise system, we no longer get it. Do you hear what he's saying, Dr. Paul? He's saying overseas they understand the benefits of free market capitalism better than Americans do here. Is he right? Well, I, I think that to a degree he is. 
But if you're going to use India as an example and a group of people who should be able to criticize us, we have corporatism here. Uh, we, uh, it isn't a failure of capitalism. They don't attack corporatism because the banks are involved in that, the military industrial complex is involved in it. Everybody's involved in corporatism. You know, the insurance companies, the media companies, all these people are involved in this. So, yes, I think what he says is true, but I don't think that uh, we're so much worse than some of these countries who are more socialized than us. And, and this is why what we have to, they say he, he's concerned about making sure people have homes and things like that. Well, that was the whole structure of the housing bubble. Print money, give it out, low interest rates, pump yeah. it up, Community Reimbursement Act, tell the banks where to make loans. Everybody had a house until the system failed because it's an economically flawed system. Yeah, yeah I hear what you're saying. It was, what Jamie Dimon is saying, Dr. Paul, is essentially, and to your point, you don't fix income inequality by making everybody eligible for, to buy a house when they can't afford it. He's talking about economic growth.